Hello, budding bacteriologists, and welcome to another exciting uh, episode of General Biology Honors. Today, we're in our kind of quest to understand DNA. We're going to look at Frederick Griffith, and he discovered a thing called the transformative agent. So here's what we'll discuss. We'll discuss Mr. Griffith. We'll discuss the bacteria he used, Streptococcus pneumoniae, which I spelled wrong through the whole video. I apologize. We're going to study how he did his experiment and what conclusions he came to. Here's Griffith. It's in early 1920s. He's a British researcher, and his main goal is to try and figure out how bacteria cause and spread disease. Specifically, he wants to know about the bacteria in the genus Streptococcus, because it's responsible for quite a few diseases. So in 1928, he does this very fancy, or not fancy, but elegant experiment, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But first, let's talk about bacteria. They're prokaryotic organisms, meaning they don't have nuclei, they don't have Golgi apparatus, they really don't have organelles made from membranes. But they can be autotrophic, meaning they do photosynthesis, or they can be heterotrophic, meaning they take sugar and break it down for their uses. Well, Streptococcus is heterotrophic. Usually it exists in pairs like this. Sometimes it can be in longer chains or even by itself. But through the process of fermentation, it takes its sugar and gets its energy. Um, now this genus of bacteria, we're going to talk about how it can be harmful or harmless, but when it's harmful, it can cause strep throat, ear infections, tooth decay, and really serious diseases like meningitis and pneumonia. So it was worth doing research on. But it can also be harmless. It's normally found in our bodies and it doesn't hurt us. But if our immune system gets messed up, then we have trouble and it, it takes over and causes disease. So how do you know which is which? Well, bacteriologists will take a sample with a cotton swab, smear it on this dish of nutritious gelatin, and then let it grow. If what grows are these colonies of kind of bumpy, rough like that, then it's considered harmless. But if it's smooth like this, it's considered dangerous, harmful. So the S is smooth, the R is safe. Griffith uh, did his experiment. Step one, he took the mice and he injected it with the harmless, the safe uh, streptococcus. And as expected, the mouse lived. Next, he put the deadly strain, the S strain, into the mouse, waited for a few days, and as expected, the mouse developed uh, pneumonia and died. So this is pretty much what he's expected to happen at this point. But he's trying to figure out what exactly about the bacteria is causing the disease. So he kills the deadly bacteria, he takes the S strain, he kills it by boiling it, and he puts it in the mouse to see what happens. And the mouse is fine. So it's clearly not something on the coat of the bacteria that's killing the mouse. He's not sure what it is, but he's, but he's thinking it has to be alive to do this. But he, he goes ahead and he takes the live version of the safe, the R strain, and he mixes it with the dead version, the S strain. So neither one of these hurt the mouse before. He puts it in the mouse, waits a few days, and to the surprise of everyone, the mouse dies. And he doesn't know why the mouse dies, but the mouse is dead. And what's weirder is the bacteria that's in the mouse now is the live S strain. It's the one that's dangerous, but that's not what he put in there at first. Of course he repeats, and that's not, he gets the same results. He doesn't know what's going on, but he gets the same results. Um, something in the dead and deadly strain was making a, the live strain dangerous. He's turned the R into the S. Transformation is the word he used. So if you look over this, you know we get the, the R strain, no problem. S strain kills the mouse. Dead S strain, no problem. Dead S strain and live R, the mouse dies. So he doesn't know what caused this bacteria to change, but he knows it changes. And so he calls whatever made it change the transformative agent, and he calls the process transformation. And this is a big deal. Everybody knows that something big is happening here. And, and a lot of people don't believe it. Oswald Avery, who we'll talk about in the next video, he didn't think it was true. He thought Griffith made a mistake. He did redid the experiment and found out that he got the same results. He re reproduced it, got the same results. Other people did, got the same results. They knew this was happening. Transformation is now a thing, but they don't know what's causing it. That's when the race for DNA starts. So today we discussed Frederick Griffith. We discussed Streptococcus pneumoniae, what it is and what it does. We discussed how Griffith did his experiment, and we discussed what conclusions he came to and how big a deal it became. So peace out, homie. Honey Badger.